The T virus, also known as the tyrant virus, is the catalyst behind all the tragic events that unfolded throughout the Resident Evil saga and serves as the foundation that defines the franchise. Designed by the Umbrella Corporation from the progenitor virus, this pathogen induces necrosis and an insatiable hunger for flesh in those infected. Its ability to reanimate the dead and trigger extreme mutations makes it one of the most lethal biological weapons ever conceived. To fully understand the T-virus, we must go back to the mid to late 20th century when the first seeds of biological horror were planted. In December 1966, Oswell E. Spencer, Edward Ashford, and James Marcus discovered a rare African flower, known to the local population as the Stairway to the Sun. This flower contained a unique pathogen that would later be named the progenitor virus. This virus was notable for its ability to cause extreme mutations in living organisms, precisely the trait these researchers were seeking. Spencer, an aristocrat with grand ambitions, envisioned the potential to create a new human race in his own image. He believed the progenitor virus could be used to achieve this superior race, an idea that laid the foundations of his obsession. Ashford, on the other hand, was more dedicated to scientific discovery, though he also studied the properties of this virus in his family mansion in Europe. James Marcus, working at Umbrella's executive training center, delved into experimenting with the pathogen, combining it with various organisms in an attempt to unleash its full potential. As part of their plan to secretly develop and test the virus, the three founders established Umbrella Pharmaceuticals in 1968. Officially, Umbrella was dedicated to supplying medicines and research solutions to various governments. In reality, it was nothing more than a front for a clandestine biological weapons project. This allowed them to generate revenue to continue their research while outwardly maintaining the appearance of being a respectable corporation. Despite their grand plans to reform humanity, the founders soon realized that there were also vast economic opportunities in turning the progenitor virus into a weapon. By offering experimental versions to military forces worldwide, they foresaw immense profits to fund their research, including what would eventually become the T-Virus Project. In its early stages, the T-Virus was merely a set of progenitor variants designed to create super soldiers capable of withstanding fatal injuries, crushing enemy forces, and following orders without moral or emotional resistance. Over time, it became evident that pure progenitor led to uncontrolled and almost always lethal mutations. Because of this, Umbrella scientists were forced to manipulate its genome to achieve more stable results. Through numerous experiments, they incorporated genetic material from annelids, leeches, fragments of the Ebola virus, and other components, refining the pathogen until they achieved controllable mutations the T-virus took shape as a more refined derivative of progenitor. Umbrella's executives saw the potential that, if they could create a biological weapon capable of turning entire populations into mindless soldiers, various governments would pay fortunes to acquire it. However, the power of the T-virus exceeded any of these expectations. In the hands of unscrupulous individuals, it became the foundation for numerous projects that sowed chaos across entire regions. No matter the justifications given, the T-virus became a force of devastation beyond human control. As it neared a functional form, the T-virus fit within Umbrella's larger plans. On one hand, they wanted a virus capable of wiping out enemy populations with great speed. On the other, they aimed to develop bioorganic weapons, also known as BOWs to sell to the highest bidder or used for their own purposes. Initially, there were disagreements on the most effective way to achieve this. Some scientists favored an extremely lethal virus that could wipe out entire populations within days. Others, however, preferred a virus that kept its victims alive long enough to reanimate them as tireless, obedient soldiers. The latter idea prevailed, as they believed that a pathogen with immediate lethality wouldn't spread effectively. Despite this, Umbrella's ultimate ambition went beyond mere economic profit. Oswell E. Spencer sought to launch the so-called Wesker Project, which aimed to select genetically compatible individuals with the progenitor strain and grant them superhuman abilities. While the scientific focus remained primarily on the key virus, sub-projects emerged that explored other avenues to forcibly accelerate human evolution. Above all, Umbrella wanted to remain the dominant name in the field of bioorganic weapons. 
To solidify that position, it was crucial to conduct extensive real-world tests of the T-virus, going as far as using entire cities as testing grounds. The Raccoon City catastrophe, though unplanned, was the natural culmination of Umbrella's obsession with proving its devastating potential. Shortly after the founding of Umbrella, the T-Virus project was launched in several key locations. The most famous was the Arclay Laboratory, hidden beneath the Spencer Mansion in the Arclay Mountains. There, multiple progenitor strains were studied, classified as Type A or Type B, though no real progress was made until the introduction of leech genes. James Marcus led the research. By combining leech DNA with the progenitor virus, he achieved a more stable infection effect than pure progenitor. Subjects mutated into violent creatures with aggressive necrosis, but retained a certain level of functionality. From a bioweapon research perspective, this was promising. The T virus was already showing tangible and relatively consistent effects. Other advancements included the addition of genetic traits from Ebola. William Birkin, Marcus's protege, reasoned that Ebola's virulence could enhance the T virus's contagion potential on the battlefield. However, a major obstacle arose. Around 10% of the population was immune to the T virus, meaning they would neither turn into zombies nor die from the infection. They would simply become asymptomatic carriers. To counter this problem, Umbrella designed other creatures capable of eliminating immune survivors. This led to the creation of monsters such as the mutant spider known as web spinner and hybrid beings like the hunter alpha produced by mixing reptilian DNA with human ova. This marked the beginning of the genetic manipulation era with the T virus as its primary tool. Although many experiments failed, they also had successes that would later unleash horror in Raccoon City. At the same time, a tense power struggle was brewing within Umbrella. Marcus began to suspect that Spencer was conspiring to steal his research. Spencer, in turn, had spies in other laboratories and ordered the theft of Marcus's data to ensure that neither of them fell behind. Meanwhile, William Birkin rapidly climbed the ranks by betraying his mentor, Marcus. Ah, oh, time to die, Doctor. I will take over your research. <laughs> Wesker Birkin. What sets the T-virus apart from other fictional pathogens is its nature as a retrovirus. Upon entering a living organism, it hijacks the host cells through reverse transcription. The viral RNA is translated into DNA, which then integrates into the host genome, forcing it to create copies of the virus. Once in the bloodstream, the T-virus spreads to tissues, including neural pathways. Generally, it causes massive cell death, necrosis, and severe brain damage. However, the virus also reanimates the infected, transforming them into highly aggressive beings driven by primal impulses. It is worth clarifying that, despite being commonly referred to as the living dead in popular culture, the fictional reality is more nuanced. The T-virus still requires living cells to replicate. When someone is bitten by an infected individual or comes into contact with contaminated fluids, the virus invades their living cells. Death occurs relatively quickly, but not so fast that the cells cannot produce more copies of the virus. The body is reactivated in a state of apparent life. The flesh decays, yet a faint level of cellular function remains. Normally, the virus destroys the areas of the brain responsible for reasoning and empathy while preserving other regions linked to movement and aggression. Additionally, hormones such as adrenaline and norepinephrine are triggered, inducing a state of rage and an insatiable hunger for uninfected beings. Over time, some subjects experience much more advanced secondary mutations. If they die or suffer extreme injuries, this can activate a process known as the act or vector accelerated cognition transmission. However, it is important to remember that this process only occurs with the epsilon strain of the virus which revives the corpse with even greater ferocity. The most well-known example is the crimson heads, fast zombies that restructure their tissues to develop claws in immense rage. A similar phenomenon occurred in Raccoon City with the Lickers, whose exposed brains and elongated tongues reveal an even more drastic mutation. There are also multiple infection pathways that explain the rapid spread of the T-virus. First, direct injection was the official procedure used by Umbrella to create BOWs under controlled conditions. Second, 
fluid transmission through bites, scratches, or exposure to infected blood or saliva introduces the virus into the bloodstream. Additionally, contaminated water was responsible for exposing a large portion of Raccoon City when infected samples were dumped into the public water supply. Finally, airborne transmission, though rare outdoors, was observed in sealed laboratory environments, such as the Arclade Laboratory in the military training facility. In this way, the T-virus devastated entire populations, while Umbrella allocated only a negligible amount of resources toward its containment or cure, compared to the vast investments made in its development. Despite everything, there were genuine attempts to create vaccines, antiretroviral drugs, and antibody-based therapies. However, most of these efforts were focused on protecting Umbrella's resources and personnel rather than saving the general population. For this reason, Umbrella mass-produced inhibitors that are designed to slow down the virus's replication by blocking key enzymes. Some mercenaries and special forces carried a drug known as Daylight for outbreak scenarios, though its effectiveness depended on the strain of the virus they encountered. Another strategy involved collecting antibodies from individuals with some resistance to the T-virus and administering them to others via pills or injections. However, this solution failed as soon as the virus mutated and evaded the antibody's effects, as happened during an incident at the incineration plant where a new variant emerged. At least two viable vaccines are known to have existed. One was created at Raccoon City General Hospital during the outbreak and saved the life of Joel Valentine. Unfortunately, the city's destruction wiped out all records and remaining supplies of the cure. The other, called T-Vaccine, appeared in 2005 thanks to the WP Corporation. Although it proved effective in field tests, terrorist attacks and sabotage prevented its mass production. None of these solutions proved definitive. The rapid mutation of the T-virus allowed it to overcome any immune barriers. In response, authorities often resorted to the total destruction of affected areas to prevent further spread. Although zombies are the most iconic image of the T-virus, Umbrella had far more ambitious plans. They created the so-called B.O.W.'s creatures designed for combat. Among their first successful creations were the Hunters, human-reptile hybrids with extreme agility, sharp claws, and enhanced senses, ideal for hunting in groups. Another major development was the Tyrant, conceived as the ultimate biological weapon, a combination of superhuman strength and a certain level of intelligence. However, only a small number of humans could evolve into a Tyrant without first turning into a zombie. The early models were unstable, but later versions such as the T-103 could follow complex orders and even infiltrate enemy ranks. One of the most feared variants was the Nemesis Type T, enhanced with a parasite that improved its combat abilities and allowed it to relentlessly pursue its targets. The liquors, on the other hand, were not originally planned. They emerged from advanced mutations in zombies, developing a quadrupedal form, exposed brains, and a lethal tongue. Their hyperdeveloped hearing allowed them to stalk their prey from ceilings and walls. Other experiments included the Chimera, a hybrid of human and fly DNA, the ivy or plant 43, a mutant plant with zombie-like traits, and the Neptune, infected sharks used for surveillance. We also can't forget about the zombie dogs. Umbrella initially tested the T-virus on dogs at its Arclay Mountains laboratory. The infections transformed them into creatures with torn flesh, exposed bones, and extreme aggression. They became known as MA-39 Cerberus, named after the mythological guardian of the underworld. Although they proved difficult to control as weapons, later outbreaks of the virus led to domestic dogs becoming infected, turning them into deadly predators in contaminated areas. These are just a few of the horrors born from the T-virus. Its adaptability allowed Umbrella to experiment with all kinds of mutations, from minor changes to full-blown nightmare creatures. By the early 2000s, Umbrella's atrocities had become unsustainable. Legal pressure and public condemnation, along with the destruction of Raccoon City, drove the company into bankruptcy. However, the T-virus did not disappear with it. Paramilitary groups, rogue scientists, and rival corporations managed to obtain samples through the black market. With Umbrella out of the picture, other organizations developed their own variants of the virus, refining or combining it with other pathogens. 
This led to mutations like the T. abyss, adapted to marine organisms, and the T. phobos, which activates in response to fear hormones. Meanwhile, the C. virus was also being developed, based on the genetic code of the T. virus. This diversification revealed an inevitable cycle. Much like nuclear weapons, once the T. virus was unleashed, different factions around the world sought to create their own versions. To combat this growing threat, organizations such as the BSAA emerged, dedicated to stopping bioterrorism. However, containing the virus became a constant struggle, making the eradication of bioterrorism seem like an impossible mission. To conclude this video, when we analyze the history of the T-virus from its origins with umbrella to its global spread, two major lessons stand out. First, the virus represents humanity's eternal struggle against its own ambition. The obsession with creating perfect soldiers and enhancing the human species led to the horrors we see in the games. Second, it demonstrates how science, when used without ethics and purely for profit, can lead to irreversible disasters, something that sadly has also happened in our real world. And that's all for today. Thanks for joining me on this journey through the origins, evolution, and consequences of the T-virus. But tell me, after witnessing the horrors the T-virus can unleash, do you think you could survive in a world where this nightmare exists? Would you be able to resist or would you end up joining the hordes of zombies? Let me know your answer in the comments. Hey, don't go just yet. If you enjoyed my video, I'd love to recommend another one for you to watch.